If he refuses to listen even to the church, then treat him as you would a Gentile or a tax collector. But let's not be mistaken. Excommunication is not about condemnation. Whenever we commit a mortal sin, we are morally obliged to avoid receiving Holy Communion. If you truly have no choice, it's not mortal. If, through no fault of your own, you don't know it's serious, it isn't mortal. Some people talk in such a way as to make mortal sins seem nearly impossible. Others make it seem like everything is mortal sin. Please avoid these extremes. Does this apply to politics? Politicians who consistently and clearly support any intrinsic evils, that is, things which are evil with no ifs, ends, or buts, must be denied communion. Relatively straightforward, but virtually never practiced. What about voters? Voters for candidates participate in the evil that they know the candidates intend. So we need to understand the principles of the morality of cooperation and evil. From all of this, I hope it's clear that claims that you hear saying that it's never a sin, let alone a grave sin, to vote for some candidate or another, or some party, or another, are simply false. Rather, we have to work through the moral reasoning to come to a conclusion about a specific case so that we can know that our vote is morally justified. So what are the proportionate reasons? To make our comparison, we need to consider quality and quantity. While many different evil acts strike against human dignity, we need to consider the way in which they do so. So what do we conclude? In practical terms, it might be more useful to consider the level of panic that an opponent of evil causes in those who are in favor of that evil. On an emotional level, I think we're as a culture very blind to the different evil realities that we face. To really understand it, we should consider how we would react if 800,000 people were being murdered in the streets each year. What might we do to sacrifice ourselves to stop it? What might we do to prevent such an action when we knew where it was going to happen? What might we do to change the circumstances that lead people to make such choices? If our acts were proportional to the reality, other people might begin to see the reality for what it is. But our actions aren't in proportion. The point isn't to prove ourselves righteous. The point is to move minds and hearts. Let's not lie to ourselves or accept other people's lies about what it means to be Catholic. And be certain. If you interpret everything, including your Catholicism, through your politics, then your politics is your religion, not Catholicism. Instead, let's be Catholic first. 